This lecture is by Dr. Alok Kumar Gupta. Good evening viewers. This is my fourth lecture on Plato. And now I am entering into Plato's world of political philosophy or political theory. And most of his political philosophy or political theory emanates from his masterpiece Republic. So in this lecture I am going to discuss about the republic and the subject matter and the content of republic it was written in 375 bc but again the date may be disputed may differ from one source to the another source and as a literature it is the record of an argument which takes place between socrates and a number of other people and this discussion is said to have taken place around the year 420 bc and socrates and other characters existed or uh, in this dialogue who were the participant they actually existed is certain that socrates taught by means of argument and conversation rather than by lectures or books are equally certain so two things are certain about this uh, uh, masterpiece of plato one is that the dialogue that he has enunciated in the book republic did really take place around 400 bc number 2 socrates and other characters who are present in this dialogue they also actually existed is that is also certain and uh, the third thing that socrates taught by means of argument and conversation rather than simply giving lectures that is also certain so uh, going through the book republic one learns about the way the argument used to proceed between socrates and the rest and uh, the method of argument was dialectical or the process in which the argument used to proceed was dialectical so as i told you in my earlier lecture that uh, if one wants to learn dialectical process in reality then one should go through at least book 1 of republic main characters in the dialogue republic are socrates who is the chief spokesman then cephalus who is a wealthy citizen of athens called within athens there is a place or there is a village called preus then polymarchus who is son of cephalus thrasymachus who is a sophist glaucon son of ariston older brother of plato adimantus son of ariston who is brother of again brother of plato so these are the major characters apart from this there are many other characters present in the book republic so now you often you will often come across this term socratic problem in different commentaries on republic or different deliberations on plato's ideas or plato plato's political theories so this is a problem that has taxed scholars over the centuries and uh, ha- the 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 main uh, meaning or the main idea behind this socratic problem is that going through the dialogues of plato it becomes very difficult to identify how much of the philosophy in the dialogues is a faithful rep- reporting of socrates own argument and how much how much of the dialogues are plato's work so what it, basically it means that this is human nature that if x share certain information with y y passes on the same information to z z passes it to on to a then in this process of collecting information and passing it on to the next listener the information gets distorted and lot of addition and subtraction takes place in the process so uh, many of the dialogues where which plato has written plato was not present during the conversation when it took place and the entire set of conversation that took place between the socrates and the rest 
were reported to Plato maybe a day or two or three days after. And Socrates jotted them, sorry, Plato jotted them down. So, this means that one would always be suspicious of the fact that Plato must have mixed some ideas of his own while reporting about the conversation that may have taken place or that that really take, took place between Socrates and the rest. So this is the Socratic problem that how much of the dialogue really belongs to Plato and how much in those dialogues Plato may have mixed his own ideas. So the Republic is universally regarded as the greatest work of Plato and represents the fullness of his thought better than any other dialogue. Means Republic is one of the best dialogue of all the dialogues that we discussed in lecture 2. And the title the Republic comes from the Latin term or word res publica which means public business because uh, <clears throat> Republic may have been uh, differently expressed or maybe a different a, a term which was used for this title in Greek language must have been different but it has been translated into uh, Republic the, the word Republic borrowing from some places or some language so one is that from Latin res publica which means public business and it stands for the Greek policia P-O-L-I-T-E-I-A, policia, which means political system or public and political life of the community. So, this is what is the meaning of policia in Greek language. So, the translators must have thought that this is the nearest word so far as the subject matter of the book Republic is concerned. So, they titled it as Republic. So the title suggests that its main theme is the nature and organization of the state, that it is fundamentally a political treatise. There is another name of republic and that is concerning justice, which implies that it is fundamental problem, that its fundamental problem is the nature of justice or moral goodness and it may thus be regarded as an ethical treatise. So some scholars have expressed this opinion that the real title of the book should be concerning justice because the entire dialogue revolves around the theme of justice. So they think that the ideal name should have been concerning justice rather than republic because this is the fundamental problem which has been addressed in the book Republic. And throughout, this is what Socrates and the rest have conversed about that is the nature of justice and the moral goodness. So, some say that it should be treated more, uh, more, of, a, of, more of an ethical treatise than a political treatise. Now, this is a quote from Ernest Barker's book, who himself was a political thinker. He has, uh, after reading Republic, and uh, he has wrote commentary on Republic and, uh, and Aristotle's politics. So he writes, in spite of these two titles, it must not be assumed that it is a treatise either on political science or on jurisprudence. Jurisprudence is the science of law. It is both and it is yet more than both. It is an attempt at a complete philosophy of man. Primarily, it is concerned with man in action and it is therefore occupied with the problems of moral and political life. But man is a whole, his action cannot be understood apart from his thinking. And therefore the Republic is also a philosophy of man in thought and of the laws of his thinking. So see, the same book is being described differently by different scholars. And a lot of such comments about Republic one may come across as you dive deeper into the literature or book republic. Further, he says, it is easy to interpret the republic as a utopia, a city in the clouds, a sunset fabric seen for an hour in the evening and then fading into the night. But the republic is not a city of nowhere. 
it is based on actual conditions it is meant to mold or at any rate to influence actual life actually the issue is that the ideal state that plato has built in the book republic is a state that exists into the realm of ideas and he himself accepts that it is unrealizable on ground but then the city that he has the city state or the ideal state that he has built it is not that it has come from nowhere this is the product of the ideas that scott shaped in his mind because of the prevailing conditions in those days athens and rest of the greek world so uh, what it means is that it is the prevalence of actual life what happens in actual life of a city that shapes the thinking of a philosopher or a thinker which prompts him to enunciate that state ought to be like this so a state as it is prompts a political thinker to conceive a state as it ought to be this is what uh, barker is trying to say then another commentator george s savine who has written a history of political theory he says republic is a book which defies classification whether it is political treatise an ethical treatise a religious treatise or or is a book on rhetoric like this we cannot classify this book into any category this is what george savine is trying to say further he says the true romance of the republic is the romance of the intelligence unbound by custom untrammeled by human stupidity and self will able to direct the forces even of custom and stupidity themselves along the road to a rational life so basically what it means is that republic is a book where plato has allowed his imaginations to go wild it is his romance with his it is a romance with his free intellect where he is thinking freely that what must be the the, the idea of a perfect state or what must be a perfect state where justice prevails so this is what savine is trying to explain george catlin he writes in his book a history of political philosophers the republic is an ethical treatise and although an example of socrates dialectic is dogmatic in its conclusions involves psychological investigation so catlin is trying to say that it is an ethical treatise and though it presents socratic dialectical method but it is dogmatic in its, in its conclusion which means it is uh, quite orthodox and uh, it it this makes it imperative that it should be investigated psychologically so it involves psychological investigation natal ship who is another commentator he has written lectures on the republic of plato and the republic represents he writes the republic represents a dramatized philosophy of human life so see see the same book is being understood differently in different context by different commentators aristotle writes he is said to have systematized many of the themes raised by plato in his republic at actually aristotle is said to have systematized many of the themes raised by plato in his book republic so uh, plato has presented them in a in a in a style which to some may be poetic to some may be dialectical to some may be something else so whatever ideas have been enunciated in the book republic it those ideas have been systematized by aristotle in his uh, the ideas of republic has been systematized by aristotle in his creations zeno of citium who was a stoic and uh, he's regarded as founder of stoicism he wrote his own version of an ideal society called zeno's republic 
in opposition to Plato's Republic. Now, remember, Jeno's Republic is treated as controversial with some embarrassment by some of the later Stoics due to its defense of free love, incest, cannibalism, and due to its opposition to ordinary education and the building of temples, law courts, and gymnasia. So, Jeno of CTM has also wrote a republic, maybe to, to go beyond what Plato has enunciated in his book Republic. And But uh, for later Stoics, who may have followed some of the ideas of Jeno of CTM, but uh, this idea or this book Republic of Jeno is, is, is somewhat an embarrassment for them because of this reason that he has defended free love, incest and cannibalism and has also opposed ordinary education. Cicero wrote De Republica and this was written three centuries after Plato's creations of Republic. And Cicero's dialogue imitates Plato's style and treats many of the same topics and Cicero's main character, Scipio Amelianus, who expresses his esteem for Plato and Socrates. So this is another piece of information that one should keep in mind. Maybe in one of the lecture I will talk about Cicero later. But he also wrote a dialogue called De Republica, wherein he has tried to imitate Plato. Augustine of Hippo, he wrote The City of God. Uh, the other, or the exact title, the original title is Sivitas Dei. And uh, this book describes a model of the ideal city. And in his case, the eternal Jerusalem is the ideal city which, uh, you know, for which he has used visionary language. So what I mean to say through these slides is that Plato's Republic has prompted many of the later thinkers to produce something on the same line, which may have fallen out. Nevertheless, ample attempts have been made. Gracian, who was a medieval jurist, he wrote Desideratum, and in which he agrees with Plato that by natural law, all things are common to all people. Plato lays out the order for a very just republic in which no one considers anything his own. Actually, uh, Plato has enunciated the rule of philosophers or uh, a guardian class which consists of philosophers and the auxiliaries and for them he has enunciated the principle of communism of female and communism of property. And he has abolished the institution of family and private property, both for the guardian class. So, but not for the entire, you know, uh, classes. Like the producer class, he has allowed them both private property and family. So this, I think, uh, Gracian's misunderstanding because he says, uh, Plato lays out the order for a very just republic in which no one considers anything his own. This is true only for a for the class of guardian. Thomas More later on wrote Utopia, which is a very famous book of More. And uh, More's island Utopia is a similar to is is also similar to Plato's Republic in some aspects, and among them common property and the lack of privacy. These two ideas have been picked up by More and uh, reproduced in his book. Utopia. Mussolini, you all know, the great fascist, he has admired Plato's Republic and often read for inspiration. He says so. Then Martin Luther King Jr., he nominated the Republic as one book he would have taken to a deserted island alongside the Bible. So these are uh, some of the appreciation or a bit of criticism of the book Republic by later thinkers or philosophers or who's who you can say. Apart from 
the way it influenced many later thinkers it also had tremendous cultural cultural influence aldous huxley's brave new world this talks about dystopian government that bears a resemblance to the form of government described in the republic featuring the separation of people by professional class actually the two words dystopia and utopia you, uh, you know one should know one should remember one should learn utopia means an imaginary state where there is order whereas dystopia means an uh, an imaginary state where there is disorder or suffering nevertheless huxley has created this brave new world and uh, therein there is dystopian government which bears a resemblance to the form of government described by the republic featuring the separation of people by professional class like the way plato has made a distinction between the producers and the guardians guardians are the professional class whereas producers are not but i think this again is a misunderstanding of huxley because producers are very much a product of platonic system of education or scheme of education so this is a misinterpretation in a sense george orwell's dystopia depicted in novel 1984 had many characteristics in common with plato's description of the allegory of the cave so what is allegory of the cave maybe i will discuss in one separate lecture because uh, this also has been asked as a question in uh, one of the net examinations then there is a film the matrix which models plato's allegory of the cave then hans georg gadamer plato and the poets he wrote in 1934 and he has described the utopic city of the republic as a heuristic utopia that should not be pursued or even be used as orientation point for political development large passages in plato's writings are ironic a line of thought pursued by kirkgard this is a comment by gadamer so you can keep it in mind karl popper wrote the open societies and its enemies and is considered to be one of the most vehement critic of plato he writes the city portrayed in republic is harsh rigid and unfree and indeed is a totalitarian he singled plato's state as dystopia so just imagine for some it is an ideal state for some it is a utopia here you have karl popper which thinks is a dystopia where only disorder is there suffering is there and rule of philosopher king he calls it or he brands it as rule of an enlightened despot so what plato propagated through his ideal state was rule of enlightened despotism according to karl popper and that's why he has titled his book as enemies of open societies bertrand russell he has argued that at least in intent and all in all not so far from what was possible in ancient greek city states the form of government portrayed in the republic was meant as a practical one by plato so this is russell's understanding thank you very much i just gave you certain glimpses of uh, the book republic how it has been viewed understood portrayed commented upon by the posterity later thinkers it is not an exhaustive list there are many more because uh, uh i think evenstian said burn the whole library because the knowledge that we talk about exist in this book republic which is you know a statement which was used by omar for the book quran so like this there are umpteen number of uh, comments an understanding by for the same book republic by plato bye bye